Uh, welcome back, uh, YouTube. Um, what I got up there right now is uh, a Magna Helic gauge, and what that measures is static pressure in inches water, uh, of uh, water, uh, water column. And uh, what I'm doing is verifying my total external static pressure. And uh, if you don't know what that is, it's really beyond the scope of this kind of video. I mean, this is an installation video, but there are many excellent videos on the internet. Uh, and just do a search on the term uh, static pressure or total external static pressure, and you'll find a lot of videos on it. Essentially what it is, is um, it's a way of determining CFM, the CFM through an air handler, um, without having to actually measure the CFM. Now, I don't want to get too technical here, but there is a way to measure the CFM, and that's using a hot wire anemometer, or well, there's other ways, but a hot wire anemometer is one way, and I do have one. Unfortunately, this installation, uh, you know, I, I can do it there on the return plenum because I can poke enough holes in there to get a, a good reading, but I have zero access to the supply plenum, so that's out of the question. So the alternate method to determining the CFM through this uh, air handler is to use this magnahelic gauge or use any kind of uh, static pressure gauge that'll read inches of water column. And what the manufacturer carrier, many, all, all manufacturers do this, um, they give you this chart, it's a calibrated chart that tells you that uh, if you measure up at the top here, you can see it says total external static pressure if you measure your static pressure, and you go on down to this table and off to the left here, you select the air handler you have, which mine is a 60,000 BTU, which is, um, of course, five ton. Uh, so, you know, pick the, uh, uh, the um, row uh, that uh, pertains to the uh, speed you have selected right now on the fan and I'm using medium right now and so we'll go on over here and I'll tell you my static pressure is around 0.5 okay I'll go down to 0.5 where it intersects with uh, uh, the medium fan speed for the 5 ton and it'll be 1663 CFM why is this important well there are some notes down here, uh, some, uh, uh, how would you say, design parameters you have to meet in terms of static pressure. Um, if you read through this, uh, and I'm trying to read through the camera here, uh, one of the caveats is that the return pressure must be less than 0.4 inches of water column on the um, return side. Otherwise you can have splashing uh, out of the drain pan. How that happens, I don't know. The, you know, the physics of the whole thing. They're just warning you that if you have greater than 0.4 inch water column on the return side, you could have water splash out of the uh, um, drain pan and what that does is soak the insulation inside the uh, air handler and I'm going to talk to that later by the way because I did uh, not as a result of static pressure but I did soak my insulation and I had to replace it so I'm going to talk to that later uh, here's another little caveat here let's see in horizontal insulation and this is a horizontal installation uh, you must have a supply static greater than 0.2 inches of water column. It doesn't say why, it's just telling you that it's got to be greater than 0.2. Now, I got to tell you, in this house, okay, well, right now, let's remember where I am. I'm on 1663 CFM. Uh, 
this house is what it is. It's a built house. I mean, you know, uh, uh, the duct work was done. Uh, there's my static pressure on the magnahelic. It's on this needle here. You see bobbing around. This is a, a just a pointer uh, that you can set as a limit. Uh, you see what I had to do up there. I had to cut a hole in, in the wall, which I'll cover over with the plate later, but I, I couldn't access that supply plenum. Uh, there's a shield that goes around it that's aluminum. You'll see that in a different video. But uh, I couldn't poke through the sides here because it's got a, an aluminum heat shield on it. And this one's no problem on this plenum on the return side. So this is how you hook it up. And if you want to read individual uh, static pressures, like the return, I'll remove the supply input to this gauge. And that right there is the supply, which is around 0.3 to 0.35. Okay, close enough to 0.4. Like I said, this system is what it is. I mean, I cannot modify uh, the ductwork. Uh, it is what it is. And the walls and the ceilings and that kind of thing. There are all minor tweaks you could make. Like if I wanted that pressure to be higher on the return side, I could use the high blower speed. Uh, and I have already looked at the chart and it, it won't gain, I won't gain anything by doing it. Uh, I could use the high blower speed or I could start blocking off one of the returns. Uh, that will increase the pressure. Likewise, on the supply side, it said it had to be greater than 0.2. I just make 0.2 uh, inches of water column on on this uh, on this meter. So I'm going to leave it as is because it is what it is. Again, there are like minor tweaks you can make. Um, first off, you have vaulted ceilings. I don't, but if you do, uh, you probably have absolutely no access um, to the uh, uh, ductwork at all uh, up in the attic. So uh, minor things you could do maybe is to change like an 8-inch register to a 10-inch register to make it a little larger. Um, just minor stuff you can do from the inside of the house because you'd be working from the inside of the house. You don't have access to your duct work and you don't have access to your um, uh, attic. So you're kind of uh, stuck with what you have. So now if you're doing your own install, I mean I wouldn't fret over this. Uh, with uh, b the blower speeds you should be able to um, get the system up and running pretty good. Now, my warning to you is that if you're going from R22 system to an R410 system um, and it's not being designed from scratch in the house, uh, you're going to have to make some compromises. And you're not going to get that, that um, wonderful EER or SEER uh, that they advertise. Um, it's just not going to happen. You're going to be some, probably something less than that because there are going to be compromises to be made because of these kinds of problems uh, and because this air handler is much larger than the one that came out of there for the R22 system. Two things involving ductwork. One, I think I mentioned before, is that physically you're going to have problems mating up to the existing ductwork in the ceiling here. and. Um, Further uh, down the line, uh, this is the other problem you're going to have: uh, mating the air handler to the existing ductwork. And uh, here's the deal: if you're a guy that's hiring a contractor to do this for you, 
and you have a you know working system or maybe it's not working but the but the blower still works in the house if he's not in there making measurements uh, then you better hire yourself another contractor because he needs to measure the static pressure on the old system he needs to know um, what the supply static pressure is and what the um, return static pressure is in the house that you know he's going to be putting the new system into and he needs to know that at the three motor speeds if it's a five ton system I, some of the small systems only have a, a, a low and a medium or a medium and a high or something like that. They only have two speed motors. Uh, five ton, uh, I think almost all of them have a three speed motor. But uh, if, if you hire a contractor to replace your R22 system with uh, a new R410 system, if he's not sitting down with you, and explaining things about the uh, duct work, what needs to be done, and if he doesn't come in and actually make some measurements, then you better find yourself another contractor. There are certain things that he needs to know before he goes out and buys a new system for you. Now, a lot of guys that I, I've heard in a community, in the community that I live in, what they are doing is um, given that R410 is uh, uh, generally uh, their, their larger system physically larger, okay, than their R22 counterparts. In order to made up physically to the duct work, they are putting a smaller system and they downsize assist, uh, the size of the system. So in other words, if you had a 60,000 5 ton BTU unit and um, they come in and they do their measurements and they measure the static pressure and so on. Uh, they may recommend, and, and, they, and there's nothing wrong with doing this, they may recommend putting a four ton system in so that everything plays together, so to speak. Now, if you have a house with vaulted ceilings, there's not a whole hell of a lot they can do, so be aware of that. And you can thank the EPA and I don't want to get too political, but thank the EPA and the liberals for this because they legislated your expensive equipment, uh, you know, into an early obsolescence. This is all um, over the environment, nothing more, just the environment. Uh, these systems, the 410 systems, are not as efficient um, as the R22 uh, systems were, hence they're larger, uh, they need larger components, larger coils, larger this, larger that. And uh, so, anyway, thank the EPA for that. The only reason I'm swapping out is because, uh, like I said, uh, I, uh, I'm running out of R22, my stash of R22, and uh, I know I have to deal with this sooner or later. So, anyway, the end of my lecture, this is getting too long already. So, my total static total external static pressure is 0.5 inches of mercury and so I'm going to be at 1663 CFM now here's another little wrinkle to this okay don't want to make this too complicated and scare people away but another little wrinkle to this I don't I don't have all the pages in front of me from the data sheet but this is a heat pump and the other wrinkle to this is that um, there's a, a heater in there that's used for emergency heat. It's an electric heater. It's a, in my case, it's a 10, 10 kilowatt heater. Uh, they come in all ranges of sizes, but on a unit this large, a five ton unit, it's going to be up around uh, 10,000 10, BTU. Later on in the data sheet for the air handler, they have a minimum CFM for a given size heater. And my CFM, minimum CFM, is supposed to be 1750 for the heater. And uh, so 
I've already tried high fan speed, and I don't like it because it makes too much noise uh, in the house. You know, you can hear uh, the air blowing from the registers. So medium is a good speed, but it only gets me 1663, and when the heater is on, the heat pump in the wintertime, I need 1750 minimum. So what I'm going to do, and, and any HVAC guy that knows his business should be able to do this too, is that I'm just going to add a relay that's going to switch the motor speed from medium to high whenever heat is called for, whenever the um, heater is turned on, the electric heater. Now the electric heater I believe is only used in defrost mode. <coughs> Again, I don't want to get too technical, but whenever a signal goes out to turn the heater on, I'm going to have that same signal switch the fan speed from medium to high, uh, just to cover the minimum CFM. Because I believe the heater is on only in a defrost cycle. And I don't want to get into the whole defrost cycle right now. Again, if you're interested in how the defrost cycle works in an air handler, there are a lot of videos out there about that too. But uh, that's the game plan, and any uh, um, HVAC guy that know, you know, knows his business would be able to, to do that very simply, uh, to switch from medium to high using a relay uh, when it heat's called for or emergency heat. Two ways you get heat. One is through a um, defrost cycle, and the other way is when you physically switch, put a switch uh, in, in the uh, emergency heat. Um, mode on your thermostat. There's an emergency heat mode. Uh, that one, to tell you the truth, I don't like. If you have children, you got to be very careful they don't switch that on. You're going to get a whopping uh, electric bill if you don't know it's on. But all right, anyway, this, this video is way too long already. So let me uh, let this go for now.